Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here to do uh, Power 6, Episode 3 or 4, King's Gamut Review slash Discussion. This is really going to be more of a conversation. I know that I'm known for my detailed reviews. I just don't know how beneficial it is with this show because there's so many things that can frustrate a detail-oriented person. For me, it's better to move to a different format. So I'm grouping today. You guys tell me what you think, how you feel about... Um, the approach that I'm taking for this review, I would love to hear your feedback down below, but let's talk about power. Now, let's talk about who the groups are gonna be. First of all, my first group is going to be uh, Ghost and Tate. The second group is Tasha, Tommy, and Keisha. The third group is going to be um, Reek and Afro Puff, and then Proctor, Stax, and Dre. So, we're going to talk about Proctor, Stax, and Dre um, last. Let's get into Ghost. Um, so, Ghost is practicing a bit of false humility. Shout out to Rabbling K. Um, he's 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 decided he's going to take this approach with Rhonda and Tate where he you know I, I'm gonna step back and 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 you know let you guys take it let Tate take it there's too much negative shine on me and I don't want that I don't want it to take away from the campaign and so and of course Tate is like good 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 this is a smart decision you're a wise man I like where your head is at you know what I'm saying he of course he wants ghost out of course he does but the problem is that Tate can't carry uh, an audience himself he doesn't have the charisma Okay, or the presence that Ghost has. Now, if Ghost is anything, he is charming and he does have a lot of charisma. Okay, we see that even when he sees, um, what's old boy that, uh, the white guy that he borrowed the money from. That guy wants to lay around <laughs> James St. Patrick Nick like a kitty cat. So Ghost has charm with people from all walks demographics the whole nine well Rhonda sees this she feels this she's falling under the sway of this so she wants to talk him out of it they've got this huge debate coming up and they really really want ghost to be there because he they know that he's going to be the topic of discussion and his background the fact that he had been locked up uh, uh, and falsely accused or wrongfully accused or whatever and they want him to come out of his own mouth and speak his truth because they know when he does he can sell it okay so <clears throat> again Tate doesn't want this um, but Rhonda does we see where Dre has an opportunity to talk to Ghost he has met with Stax and Stax is continuing to put the squeeze on Dre. He um, wants Ghost to, to put him on. Like, I need to get some money. I need to get some loot. Like, I need you to put me on. Like, introduce me to Jason and see if he got some work for me. It's like, no, 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 you don't want to get involved with Jason. Well, yes, I do. Jason trying to get me involved. I've told him I don't want to get involved. He wants me to get rid of the person that's there now in order for me to take that person's spot. And Dre's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And it's almost like Ghost gives it a half second thought, right? Like, at the same time, he's got Angela in his subconscious reminding him that it is his responsibility to get justice for her death 
So while he would love to put the work off on someone else, he feels obligated, it seems like, to do it himself. If anybody is going to kill his brother, it should be him, basically. But he's told Dre enough. He's also told him that it would be good, it would be bad for him where it comes to stacks, and it will be bad for both of them when it comes to Jason. But of course, he's already told Dre enough. Dre knows enough to now go ahead and take his own initiative. And this is going to be a problem. But that's 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 for another time. We do get to see where um James takes Ramona to dinner and he has to leave abruptly which shocks her but slightly turns her on as well every chance she gets to give him a little pat a little touch a little rub she does i mean she her panties are on simmer like she feels a steady growing heat in her crotch area every time ghost is around he knows it he has her right where he wants her and and you know he is being very slow and very deliberate with the situation, okay? He knows it. Um, he finds out at this point that Tate has bombed ridiculously at whatever this debate is that he had, and they, they want him back on board. And he says, oh, I'll consider it, right? So everybody knows Ghost likes to be sought after. He likes to be needed. This is really, really important to him. Let's talk about Tommy, Tasha, and Keisha. Um, Tasha's in a bad way. And she needs money and she needs it bad. She's in such a bad way that she wants Tommy to give her money. Now, she really just wants to launder money and earn her own money, but Tommy just wants to give her money. Now, one, it's not going to be her money. Two, she's going to perpetually owe him. All right? She doesn't want this. She wants enough to help her get on her feet. The cost, the overhead is a lot. Okay? At the same time, her and Tommy's relationship is losing some. They were like best friends, really, really good friends. But the strain that they both have on each other from her and Ghost and not having any money and him and Keisha and, and Ghost being breathing down his neck trying to kill him every five minutes. And he there it's 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 eating away at their relationship. We see it when Tasha goes to the to the um, mall and she's taking some things back. She's trying to get some cash. Like you don't even have a grand you could put your hands on. That's crazy to me. Coming from a penthouse. I mean, you wearing Louboutins and, and just like you. It's just crazy to me. It's crazy to me that she won't go. She's got a degree and she won't even go get a job as a secretary. Now, I, I get it. You haven't had to work, but you need some income coming in. Nobody says you can't hustle on the side, but girl, you got to know. You don't even have a grand. You, you don't even have $500 you can put your hand on. Anyway, she's in the mall. She's arguing with the lady about, and Keisha walks up with her chanel bag and all the bags that she has in her hand from her shopping and she's just like girl you look like you need some help and Keisha's like no. and tasha was like no i'm just um you know and uh just shopping just like you keisha rubs it in her face and and um she tells her about kate and tells her about kate uh coming over unexpectedly and and mentioning holly and she wants to know what happened with holly and, and Tasha knows better. She knows not to tell her one, no good can come from it. And two, she takes this opportunity to tell Keisha she needs to be careful with Tommy and don't get in over her head like Holly did. Now, at first, I think, oh, she's warning her. Like, she really does care about Keisha. But at the same time, when she's back talking with Tommy and they getting high in the car again. It is clear that she's playing them against each other because she tells him that he asks him if he's sure he can trust Keisha. 
because she may not she may look like she built for this but she may not be built for this she wants to clean the money but he got keisha for that when she brings up holly you know what i'm saying like everything you feeling about keisha you felt the same way about holly but that is it for him he asked her to get out of his car basically he was like i got something else i gotta do and when she got her pinky toe when her pinky toe hit the asphalt he peeled off left her spinning like a top on the street um he seems like he's 110 percent all down with keisha just like he was with holly he sold out on keisha now keisha back at the mall when she tells her that she needs to be careful with tommy she was like oh you ain't got to worry about tommy i got tommy on lock okay tommy is under my complete control first of all tommy is a psychopath okay there's no way to control him none None whatsoever. I mean, he returned the car because the glove compartment had a smell. Like, let's move on. <clears throat> so, Keisha's, I mean, uh, Tasha's also getting hit from the standpoint that the neighborhood that she's in, that that uh, Tate got her in, is a neighborhood that's being shaken down by a drug dealer named Zeg. And Zeg won $1,000 a week. I was like, the balls to ask somebody for a grand a week but it seemed like he was saying that he was gonna supply people to her business anyway i don't know um so she also has a mother who um is a dancer and she's continually late picking her son up and um she gives the lady a break gives the girl a break but she also used the girl to get some information about Zeg when she learns a little bit more about Zeg she goes to him with a proposition now this is after Tommy lets her know that he'll lend her some money but he is not finna use her laundering skills at all so um she makes a proposition to Zeg that she'll um she could work with him like they could be partners and he gives her some drugs to move and of course she's going to use her stripper friend for that everybody who we have seen work together we're seeing now some fraying of these relationships where tasha and tommy will ride or die tasha tommy wants her to leave let him into the penthouse she don't want to do that because she don't want to kill her kid's father have her kid's father kill he feel a type of way about that she feel a type of way about keisha he feel a type of way about her feeling a type of way about keisha and she realizes girl you're on your own no one's coming to save you you gonna have to make make it do what it do so now you back to low level drug deal freak and afro puff are playing chess and he gets you know into this conversation with her where he's kind of talking to her um in this conversation that is textbook caning he doesn't realize that he's playing checkers and she's playing chess he does win at the game of chess but ultimately he's losing everything that she's doing is strategic when he gets a text from the italians doing the game and they tell him they want him to bring product that night and she notices and she says well i'm gonna go you text me when you got more product for me to move like when when i can re-up on her way out she texts somebody unknown and lets them know the competition is having issues with their getting product you know distribution we don't know who she's talking to um but she does say the competition so maybe she isn't a narc um maybe she is working with another drug dealer on campus well later on we see where Tariq goes to the projector room and he's hidden in the ceiling um 
the remainder of his stash so tommy must not have taken everything the remainder of his stash and i don't know why he didn't just go back in the window at tommy's warehouse i guess it wasn't secure enough for him anymore but he decides to take baby aspirin and it looks just like the pill that he's selling the drug and he combines them and it looks like he's got more than what he does takes that to the italians and they are like cool you know what i'm saying shake the bottle oh, okay cool he goes on about his way later on he's back at school now mind you she was in the AV room, so she must have followed him or she must have known that he was going there because she's in the AV room in the shadows and she watches him do this. Well, later on when the dean gets a tip from someone that he was in the AV room and that he had drugs in there, they find the aspirin. He's like, oh no, it's just baby aspirin. Well, him and the dean and Natasha is there together. and. Tasha thinks it's about using the AV room, but it's really about the drugs. Drugs, she see the bruise on his face, and she's just like, what's going on? She wants the dean to give him a second chance, and the dean lets her know, Choke was his second chance. Get your stuff. Get what you can carry now, and we'll mail the rest, but you out of here. So she takes him on home, back home to the penthouse. So when they get to the penthouse, first thing James want to know when she walk off the elevator is what are you doing here? Well, your son can still get in the building and I happen to be the the woman that gave birth to your son. So, uh, this is why I'm here. Of course, he is classic James St. Patrick, disrespectful, dismissive of her, finds out that Tariq has been expelled for selling drugs he wants to now buck up at Tariq he wants to give Tariq what for he got Tariq all up against the wall Tariq cussing him out okay they send Tariq to his room and he and 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 Tasha try to have a conversation but it's impossible they these two it's just seems like they will never ever ever get to this place where things are amicable one he has zero respect for her zero respect for her and she knows it okay and it's something that is very difficult for her to take it's something that is very difficult for her to swallow i don't think she would mind ghost being dead i think ghost being dead having not having left this earth not showing her the respect of seeing her as a boss you know be queen i think is her greater issue she wants him to finally break down and say <clears throat> you are smart and you are kind and <laughs> you are wonderful she needs this from him but you know of course she's in true tasha fashion she was like let me get up out of here Okay, so she rolls out, but not before she sees that he has a house guest there. Later on, when she's going back and forth with Tommy, she lets Tommy know about this house guest. Reek is off the chain officially. <laughs> He's officially, officially off the chain. We do learn that even though Reek is moving in this way that seems like he is a boss, seems like he has learn so much from Canaan and Tommy and his father he's really quite dumb he's really quite stupid because you got a whole snitch in your camp and don't even know it you don't know that um you cutting the quality and the quantity of someone's pills is gonna come back and bite you real real quick like you have no idea that having no honor amongst yourself and the other thieves is going to be an issue like it's a sure sign that you are immature okay but we're gonna talk about that let's talk about proctor and stacks and dre stacks refuses to believe that that james st patrick did not kill angela if angela showed up 
from the grave with dirt, the dirt still in her hair and told Stax that James did not kill her, he wouldn't believe it. He just would not. If an angel came and took him back in time and showed him the actual murder scene as it played out, he would not believe it. He is completely sold out on the fact that it is James. It must be James. Meanwhile, he's he's a whole rogue out here. He's a whole rebel, okay? And there is absolutely no checks and balances in what he's doing. Absolutely none whatsoever. When he and Blanca are talking and she's trying to explain it to him and break it down to him like, fourth grader he still refuses to acknowledge that maybe possibly it could be someone else so <clears throat> he's called to the carpet he's called to the carpet about martinez and the fact that her address was leaked and how it was leaked he does not tell um, all of his role and his parts and because he's been given carte blanche a, as a as a Caucasian male to do whatever it is he wants to do he doesn't have to get um, a sign off on anything he's been his foot feet are being held to the carpet about sending the FBI agents down to Angela's apartment and coming up with bupkis okay it I'm like, well, how could, why would the F go, and he doesn't have paperwork, like, he doesn't have, I just don't understand how you can have a whole legion of people go out and, and lead a raid against someone, and you don't even have to have your boss sign off on it, let alone you tell your boss about it, like, it's ridiculous, it doesn't make any sense, but okay, let's move forward, he also learns that, um, Angela, Angel, or whatever the girl's name is, Martinez, this witness has decided to change her mind. They know that James did not go there to kill her, but he went there to pay her off. They learn, talking to Stax, that he got an informant, and that informant is Dre. Um, they don't ask him what he's using for bartering. They don't ask what Dre is getting in exchange. They don't get into all of that. It, those are the finer details that are just not important in a federal investigation. And since this is the one and only individual who is in charge of investigating this whole situation, we're just going to talk to him. Well, he thinks that he's got another witness, ex-junkie wife. Well, he finds out he does not because the woman is dead. She died of an overdose. And Proctor is the one that called it in. Not only is he threatening Dre, he got little heaven heaven the daughter in the car she crying and want her daddy want her daddy i'm like is that legal to keep someone's whole human child away from them and keep them in state custody as opposed to putting them with the parent or the grandparent i guess i guess anyway they decide they're gonna go down and talk to Pro proctor Blanca, the head of the the um, task force, and and stacks. So Proctor's at home. He's talking with Benny. He wants to tell Benny what's going on. Not just about um, Tommy and the. Um, and what Stax is doing, strong arm and, 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 and ghost. But he also wants to talk to him about what he did to pressure his ex-junkie wife into finally overdosing. Before he can share it, um, Stax and those come to the door. The feds are here. Sends Benny on upstairs with Alyssa Marie and they grill him he don't give much but Proctor wants to use the restroom now 
He goes to the restroom, and right in front of the restroom is the book bag with the unicorn bug on it. He takes the unicorn bug off and later on discovers the conversations that was on there, including the last conversation he had over the ex-junkie wife body. So when he comes back to Proctor, he pressures him, and he tells him, I've got this information. Now, I'm not sure. I thought Proctor was a better lawyer than what he is. But okay, again, we're not going to pick at those scabs. And Proctor decides that he, that's fine. All Stacks want is Proctor to prove, the pro, for Proctor to give him St. Patrick as the killer of Angela. That's all he want. Um, and, you know, Proctor concedes to give him something. Later on, when he does get a chance to finally talk to Benny, he tells Benny the whole thing. He tells Benny that he got rid of the laptop. He tells Benny that he he can't give up Ghost and Tommy because it's the death sentence. He's not going to rat. He doesn't want to rat. Now, mind you, Benny got up from from having been, been sitting on the couch and had Alyssa Marie in his lap, and she was supposed to be asleep. So when Proctor is talking to him and telling him about everything that's going on and telling him how he kind of stressed the ex-junkie wife out, put all of these stresses on her, which led her to overdosing. He watched her die. He didn't call for help. Alyssa Marie's got her eyes open and she hears all of this. Now, she more of a writer and smarter than Tariq is because she don't say a mumbling word about it at all. Oh, nada. All right. So, <clears throat> Proctor goes back to Stax, and he tells him, gives him some information. It is not what he wants to hear. He has decided to kind of play Tommy and James against each other. Either that, or he decided his safest place is with James. Honestly. Tommy is his worst nightmare. Now, he knows James will snap his neck, but Tommy will will snap his neck, rip, rip it off the head, and suck all of his innards out of the neck hole. Like, he is terrified of Tommy, and with good reason. And with good reason. Like, Tommy is... is is the, the very definition of overkill. Proctor's gone over to talk to James and ask him to go ahead and kill this Martinez witness because she's the only link that's going to tie them all together. And he also goes to talk with Tommy, and this is when Tommy runs up on him. Tommy don't trust him. He know he run with ghosts real heavy. Did the Martinez girl say she saw their face? She can identify the killer, and that's what she going to do. You have to kill her. And Tommy's like, dang, Proctor. Yeah, dang, Proctor. Not only are you letting the wife die, but now you're trying to push other people to kill somebody else. Like, you supposed to be somebody's daddy? Okay. So, Tommy later on goes and talks with Tasha, learns that that Proctor is, is over at Ghost's house, but not before he goes over to his Martinez and she over there talking with Stax. He comes in the window and hides in the closet when they come in the door and he overhears the conversation. Now she's lying. She knows that it was ghost by ghost voice, but she did not see ghost. But since she got the money that ghost gave her, she has decided she gonna play both sides against the middle. She gonna still put him in jail. Now she in the same apartment that ghost already walked into with Dre. She's in it you know, she's taking this money. She's in a vulnerable state. She's supposed to be a witness. She's not in wits like she's not being hid away. And in the middle of all of this, you're gonna change and decide you're gonna tell that you saw him when you know you didn't see him. You gonna swear to that under oath. Well Tommy hears all this from the closet. So when Stax leaves um, he walks up on the girl and snuffs her, shoots her right in the head and kills her. 
okay? Not only that, he finds out that that um, Proctor is staying somewhere, but he doesn't know where for sure. He doesn't find out that Proctor is living there until Tasha tells it. I'm not really sure why he had old dude that was running with Canaan, that was sneaking around with Canaan, kill somebody when he found out that Proctor was in this this individual, the guy that they had in the trunk, was uh, I guess a, a um client of Proctor's and find out that Proctor is in Tribeca. But I think by this time Tommy knew Tommy knew that Proctor was staying with Ghost because Tasha had already said it. Anyway, let me not pick at these details. Um, kill that guy. So now you don't kill Martinez. You don't kill the guy in the trunk. That's that's Proctor's client. You call Dre. You don't. You know that Dre done got kicked out for drugs, and you decide you're gonna deal with him on that. I'm a, He he tells uh, Dre, I'm gonna deal with you about. The fact that you still had drugs and you lied to me. But I need you to turn the alarm off on the service door and get the heck out of there. Who else is in the apartment with you? And evidently the penthouse is so large, he don't know who else is in the house. Now, Tasha know that Proctor is there because Proctor walked up on her and goes arguing after Dre got kicked out. But apparently... Tariq don't know that Dre, that Proctor's in the house. Now, what he does is he gets ready to leave out like he's told to do. After he reassure, he's reassured by Tommy that Tommy not coming to kill his daddy. Now, he hate his daddy, but he don't want Tommy to kill his daddy. Now, y'all remember, he's also the one that got Kanan Kane snuffed out. Because he knew Kanan wasn't going back to jail. So, Tariq talk a good game, but I don't believe he going he gonna to let Tommy kill his daddy. So he hears Alyssa Marie crying out of Raina's room. And because of what happened with Raina, he's got two sisters. I guess he kind of been missing Raina. He has a soft spot on Alyssa and he decides to take her with him. They leave out and go get Coco. And he leaves the door lock on and so it doesn't close flush, right? <clears throat> Turns the alarm off and goes on. Well, Tommy comes in the door. And Proctor is there thinking he's fine, he's cool, everything's copacetic. And Tommy has got, I don't know what kind of gun that was. If y'all know, put it down below, baby. But when I tell you that gun tore that penthouse apart, the sofa, the wall, the cabinets, I mean, he was... I mean... It, the, the, the destruction of this weapon is just ridiculous for him. You know, like, it's so Tommy, but it's just ridiculous for anyone to have a weapon that is that destructive. Well, he was a little thrown off with the fact that Proctor had a, um, a um, gun himself. He wasn't ready for that, right? You wasn't ready for that, but you bring an elephant gun to a fly fight. Like, Proctor was never, ever going to be a challenge for you, Tony. Uh, Tommy. That was ridiculous. Well, Proctor has put some things in place. He knew that somebody was coming for him. Tommy is his worst nightmare, but he knew somebody was coming. Okay? And so, the things that he put in place, even though he told his cousin Benny he did not have that laptop anymore because it incriminated him, he did have an SD card with all the information and the audio on it. A very small SD card. And he gives this little girl a heart. And inside that heart is a compartment that holds the SD card. And he tells her, this is daddy's secret. Daddy promises to take care of you and keep your secrets, and you're going to keep Daddy's secret, right? She says yes. And again, she is a better kid than Tariq because through this episode, she keeps the secret. She doesn't tell it, even when she's in her most terrifying moments. Now, 
They're shooting back and forth. This gun is destroying the apartment. He makes his way to the back. He does not know Alyssa Marie is not there. He calls her, she answers, and he knows that she's having Coco. And he tells her to tell Tariq to take him, take her to Benny's. Are you coming later? He says, Daddy loves you. And she's crying. She knows. She's dealt with the junkie mama. She knows that the daddy's a liar. She's heard him basically confess to the death of her mother. She's not a weak little girl, but she's saddened that her daddy, she'll never see her daddy again. Tells her he loves her, hangs up. Basically, he tries to barricade himself in Raina's room. And it was just, it was just brutal. Hide behind the bed. He couldn't. He ran out of bullets. Tommy comes in. He stands up. And Tommy just unloads that weapon into his chest. Like, he is dead He's a goner. It was so brutal. Later on, we see that the police are there. I mean, all that shooting, I just don't know why they wasn't there sooner, but they're there. They may have said the body wasn't even cold yet. Um, Ghost rushes in. He is shocked. He's shocked at the house. The house is torn up. He's shocked that Proctor is dead. And it's apparent that he does, he didn't have anything to do with it. Now, he's already gone by Alicia um, or A. Martinez's uh, apartment. He saw, found her body dead there. And though he doesn't find the money because Tommy took it, he does have the envelope with his fingerprints and stuff on it. He takes that. And he goes on. Now when he sees that Proctor's dead, he's shocked. Like he is, <laughs> I just think that he is realizing that this, even though he talked down about Tommy to Dre and he does it to others, including Proctor and, 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 and he talks down to Tommy himself. I don't think it was his expectation that Tommy would be this rogue. I don't know why, but he just seems taken aback with how much of a formidable foe that Tommy has been to him. And I think that's odd. I think it's odd because even though Tommy has proven himself to be kind of um, a wild card, he he's he's always been your hitter, James. He's always been your hitter. Like, this is what he do. Death and destruction is what Tommy does. Right? If Alyssa was there, he'd have killed that girl too. I believe it. Whether by accident or just point blank killed her, he would have killed her too. Especially the way he laid waste to that apartment. That gun did major damage to that apartment. Doors off the door frame. I mean, it's just crazy. <clears throat> so, Alyssa tells Tariq. Tariq takes her to Benny. Benny gives him the head nod. He gives Benny the head nod. It's this moment where he, he kind of seems like he feels like he did something good. He couldn't save Raina, but he's saving Alyssa. Delivered her to Uncle Benny's. He turns to walk off and the Italians pull up. I don't know how they knew where he was. Italians pull up and throw him in the back of the car. They know that he done mixed baby aspirin with their pills. And they pissed off about it. But instead of him going ahead, them going ahead and killing Tariq, which would solve a lot of our issues, they instead text Tommy and tell Tommy to meet him. They got something in this 911. Do the same thing with Ghost. Ghost and Tommy get there. They think it's a setup for each other. And they realize that it was the Italians. They got reeked. And they gonna kill him if in 24 hours they don't come up with two million dollars okay so now the next episode we are going to see where ghost kind of has to work in tandem with tommy okay also we see where tasha is bridging out her on her own from ghost and from tommy she's gonna do what she gotta do and make the money she need to make Okay, so she done went from being this highfalutin housewife. Now you back to slinging dope. Like a common, you know what I'm saying, dope dealer, right? Tariq, it looks genuinely terrified. Like, okay. 
<laughs> now you scared. Now you scared. When Tariq got put out of that dorm, he looked down at that chessboard, and I said to myself, I wonder if he know that that's who turned him up. Or was he looking at that chessboard because he was feeling like he's going to miss his girl, like, you know. Anyway, I think he was looking at that board because he realized he had been had. But um, that is power, you guys. Tell me what you think. Put it down below. Um, what do you guys think about the grouping? Uh, you know, we knew that Proctor was fodder. It was just a matter of time. It's just, in this episode, Tommy killed or had killed three people all together between him and his goons three people like we're back to season one season two um power and i have to say i rather enjoy it i do i really really do i want to see what these next few episodes are going to be you guys tell me what you think how it's going to play out i love to hear what you think um what y'all think about proctor getting it um let me know put it down below and until next time honeybees i'll holla. Mm -hmm.